And hello everybody, this is Richard, aka the Lion of the Mystic Law. So, in today's video, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to basically be presenting to you a presentation on the Buddhist concept of the Ten Worlds. So, you can see right here. Uh, I'm going to actually have this linked in the description below for anybody that would like to follow along with me during this presentation. But anyway, so, mutual possession of the Ten Worlds. So, I'm going to basically be explaining in this video what the Ten Worlds are in Buddhism. And I'm going to basically be breaking it down and giving my own um, examples and my own interpretation of the information. So, anyway... The mutual possession of the Ten Worlds is a revolutionary concept to view the inner workings of life. We bring out the tenth or highest world of Buddhahood by chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and caring for others. The aim of our Buddhist practice is to make Buddhahood our basic life tendency. So just to explain and break down a little bit. Um, the term Buddhahood, as it's being stated here, essentially means enlightenment. It's basically a, a state of being. It's a very peaceful state of being to which you have obtained spiritual knowledge or insight in particular. So the inner workings of life, what this basically means here is the psychology and spiritual practice of deep diving into your inner self for the purpose of of self-exploration or self-understanding, healing, or like a, a spiritual transformation is essentially what the inner workings of life refers to here. Um, if anybody has any questions um, as you're watching this video if, or if you would like something better explained, definitely leave a comment. I would be more than happy to um, engage in dialogue with you. So do not be shy. I don't bite. Let me know. So anyway, uh, continuing on with the lecture. So the mutual possession of the ten worlds. The ten worlds is a classification of ten states of life that people inherently possess. Each of the ten worlds possesses the potential for all the other worlds in itself. This is called the mutual possession of the ten worlds. We can experience any of the ten worlds at any time. Most important, whatever your life condition... Through our Buddhist practice, we can bring forth the world of Buddhahood in an instant. So even in the miserable state of hell, through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, we can instantly experience the joy of Buddhahood. So essentially, and there's going to be something down here that's going to explain the Ten Worlds in a little bit more detail. But if I had to give an example of what's being talked about here... Imagine the idea that every emotion that you feel is basically the same of stepping into a different realm or a different world or a different universe of some kind. Essentially what's being expressed here is that through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, through our Buddhist practice, regardless of what aspect of the ten worlds that we find ourselves in, we can just say the prayer of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and we can instantly change our mood. It's to say that if you're miserable or if you're sad, uh, and you're basically in that realm of sadness or anger, just by chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, you can awaken an enlightened state within and bring forth your inherent Buddha nature, which is basically within all of us. I guess to put it into perspective, if you're familiar with the original Buddha, he basically um, had the ability to call upon his Buddha nature, um, and through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, you can essentially do the same thing that he did. Just to put it into perspective. Um, and you can basically transform any form of suffering that you're feeling through chanting a lot, essentially. So, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. So anyway, uh, here we basically have a little bit more of a breakdown of the Ten Worlds. So it says here, the mutual possession of the Ten Worlds. So as you can see here, we have Buddhahood, Buddhasava, Realization, Learning, Heaven, Humanity, Anger animality, hunger, and of course, hell. The ten worlds are the ten potential states of life. Um, 
so you could essentially say that the lower state is hell, the second lower state is hunger, which is essentially greed. Animality is basically when we're in this state where we let our instincts kind of take over without any rationale of our actions or what we're doing. Anger, I mean, this is a self-explanatory thing, but this is basically when we're in that state. You know, anger is considered a state of hell. And that's one of the things I love about Buddhism because when you study other religions, they try to make it seem like hell is basically this dark underworld place that we go to when you die. But from a Buddhist perspective, hell basically takes place in your mind. You know, hell basically represents any negative emotions that you're feeling. That's basically the Buddhist version of hell, which I love because it makes so much more sense um, to look at it this way, at least to me. Uh, and humanity is basically when you begin to rise above these lower emotions and you start to enter a more humanistic state of being, you know. Um, and then, of course, you have heaven, which is when you start to get to that enlightened state through chanting. Um, and then, of course, there's learning. You basically, uh, it's a high state where you, where once you become aware and you start to go up, you know, these levels, you start to learn from any mistakes that you may have made. And then that also adds to your enlightenment. And then, of course, we have realization. That's when you realize the true meaning of all the different things that you have. Like, for example, when I go through the 10 uh, worlds that happen within, that sometimes can happen within a span of moments, um, when I go through these realms, I get to this point of of um, realization. And then, and then I actually can see how these lower states, what these things were meant to teach me. Like, I'll give an example. So I once had an argument with a friend and I found myself in the state of hell because I took offense to something that he said to me um, or like an interaction that we had. And through chanting, I was able to gradually move through these different realms of emotions that I was feeling like I was down here and I just slowly moved up through just chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. And then eventually I got to the realization because one thing that Buddhism says is that if, if anybody in your life triggers you and makes you feel upset, that person is basically in your life to help you to see what your weaknesses are and in turn help you to become a better person. So it's to say that when you're when you think that someone is making you suffer and you're in that state of hell, what's really going on is that person is just helping you to see um, what you need to work on. And that's basically what I realized when I moved through these realms and got to the realization part. I believe the actual definition of Buddhasava is, Buddhasava of the earth is inherently Buddhas. But rather than being satisfied with attaining for themselves, they have chosen to willingly go out and actively engage with people amid the harsh realities of society. There they demonstrate the power of Buddhist practice through winning over all manner of obstacles and helping others to do the same. Buddha's Nichiren teachers reveals themselves in this world through their actions as Buddhasavas. Even in the lowest state of hell, we can bring forth the highest state of Buddhahood. So by chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, you can transform any of these lower states and get to that enlightened state. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't take you multiple lifetimes to get there like in other forms of Buddhism. Because uh, depending on what type of Buddhism you study, some will give the impression that it takes, you know, eons to reach uh, the state of enlightenment. But through this this particular Buddhism, which is Nichiren Buddhism, and by chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, you can instantly start to transform whatever state of life that you're in and get to this state right here. So, yeah. So, chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, just as we are. When you're suffering, when you're sad... When you're hurting, just chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo with an open heart. Keep chanting just as you are, as if sharing your feelings with a caring person. That's the other thing I love about this practice. This is meant to be a non-judgmental practice. None of us are perfect. It's okay uh, if we're if we feel bad, if we're suffering, if if we're crying. You know, this practice is about being raw. It's about being with yourself and going through your emotions. And, you know, uh, you know, when you chant, it's as though you're having a dialogue with the universe. 
you are you are chanting with the many Buddhas from the past. Um, you know, you're being embraced by Nichiren Daishonin, and you know you're you know this is a you know you, you just express how you feel, and it's through doing that, it's having that open dialogue with the universe and expressing your vulnerability that you can get to that state of enlightenment and that's when you start to go through your emotions and that's when you start to feel better and that's when all the that's when you realize what the purpose of what you're experiencing is so yeah but the most important thing most important as you chant you will experience courage surging up from within filling you with the conviction that you can triumph over what's troubling you even if the problem isn't resolved immediately, the time will come when the suffering of hell will vanish instantly, lessening one's karma retribution. So there's an old saying in Buddhism that I just love so much, and the saying is, winter will always turn to spring. I love this so much because it's so beautiful. It's like no matter how dark, how cold the world feels, um, spring will always come. And through chanting, you find the strength to be able to take on any um, issue or any challenge that you're currently facing. Because at the end of the day, it's not really the challenges that make us feel weak and make us suffer. It's our, it's our spirit. It's our life force that determines whether or not we suffer. And through this practice, through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, you can actually bring forth this invincible feeling of courage to take on any challenge that is placed before you. Um, it doesn't matter what it is by chanting. Another thing I want to mention is that if you're watching this video and you're new to Buddhism and you find yourself thinking, you know, that you're interested but you don't want to go too deep into it, my suggestion to you is give it a shot. Like, Come up with something that's important to you, chant about it, and um, you know, and, and you can even write in the comments and let me know of a goal that you have or something that you're trying to push through, and um, I can chant for you. We can chant together to help you to move uh, past whatever issue that you have. Um, because at the end of the day, the most important thing about this practice is benefit, uh, because. If, if, if the idea is once you see that this works, you'll want to do it more and more. So, yeah. Anyway, continuing on. The world of Buddha Sava leads us to Buddhahood. There are countless people in the world whose hearts have been wounded for some reason. We need to extend a healing hand to them all. Through such efforts, we, in fact, heal ourselves. When we look after and care for others, that is, help others draw forth the strength to live, our own strength to live increases. When we help people expand their state of life, our lives also expand. This is the marvel of the Buddha Sava path. Actions to benefit others cannot be separate from actions to benefit ourselves. So what the, what this basically means is that in in Buddhism it is believed that every action that we take to try to help somebody else essentially helps us. In fact, in Buddhism, the more effort that you put in trying to help someone better their own life, um, the happier you feel because we're all connected. Um, I even actually have an experience uh, to which I was able to help someone who was sick. Um, and I was able to experience the pure joy of seeing them improve their own health. If you want to check that video out, I have a link that I will leave to it below. Um, it's basically a video where I talk about how I used uh, Buddhism to overcome COVID, uh, through helping someone else. But yeah, in Buddhism, the true strength of a human being only comes out when you're trying to help someone else um and, and it's a beautiful thing because when you're trying to help another person you you actually forget about your own problems because you're so focused on trying to help them and in turn um their victory encourages you even more to better deal with whatever you're going through and that's how you create true friendship i mean that's the other thing i love about this practice because 
we all want to feel connected. We all want to feel like we have friends or people that we can you know, we can connect to. And this Buddhism really promotes the idea of helping and caring about other people. And, you know, just like how when you chant, you start to feel better within yourself, you combine that with helping someone else improve their life, that feeling gets doubled and your benefits double. Um, it's really an incredible feeling. I would definitely recommend anybody who just wants to feel incredible, amazing, to really give this a shot. Not only chant, but help somebody else to chant uh, who's suffering. And I guarantee, I can say from personal experiences, this is just a beautiful, wonderful feeling, and I love it so much. Anyway, continuing on. Establishing Buddhahood in our lives. Oh, establishing Buddhahood in our lives means having a total peace of mind. Uh, and it's, you know, um, our daily practice of Ganyo... Now, for those that do not know what Ganyo means, Ganyo is essentially a ceremony to which you perform. Uh, it basically consists of chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and reciting portions of the Lotus Sutra. Now, if there's anybody who would like a more detailed video about um, Ganyo and how to actually do it, it's basically like a spiritual workout i'm actually going to link a video below or i may actually have it as a card uh this video will explain to you how to go about ganyo the right posture and what's really cool is that just in watching this video and listening to what's expressed you may find that you feel more happy and more uplifted so i'm gonna leave that for you in the description or somewhere but um yeah, it's it's wonderful, but essentially Ganyo, uh, in the practice of Nichiren Buddhism, means reciting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo in portions of the second and sixteen chapters of the Lotus Sutra, ideally in front of the Gohanzen. Chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, the primary practice is like fuel for an engine. Reciting the Sutra is like a supplementary practice like adding oil to an engine so basically our morning and evening practice is an invigorating ceremony of beginningless time that revitalizes us from the very depths of our being therefore the important thing is to chant each day filled with a sense of rhythm and candice like a horse galloping through the heavens i hope you will chant in a way that leaves you refreshed and revitalized in both body, spirit, and mind. So yeah, that is basically an explanation of Ganyo. Uh, so yeah, our daily practice of Ganyo is a solemn ceremony in which our lives become one with the life of the Buddha. By applying ourselves steadfastly and persistently to this practice for manifesting our inherent Buddhahood, we firmly establish the world of Buddhahood in our lives. So that it is solid and unshakable like the earth. It's like be the mountain. By chanting and obtaining that enlightenment state, you basically become firm like the mountain. Like imagine the idea of like rain and storms and all this stuff. And no matter what gets no matter what hits the mountain, it stays firmly in place. So I guess to put it into perspective, be the mountain. Be the mountain. You can be the mountain, grasshopper. You are the mountain. Anyway, when we establish Buddhahood as our basic life tendency, we can move toward a future of hope while creating positive value from all our activities in the nine worlds, both past and present. In fact, all of our hardships and struggles in the nine worlds become the nourishment that strengthens the world of Buddhahood in our lives. That's the other thing I love about this Buddhism, because in certain other interpretations of Buddhism, the idea is to um, is to let go of emotions because they say in other forms of Buddhism, it represents, you know, <clears throat> it's it's something that we're supposed to let go because it what it's what creates the problems. But in this Buddhism, th what we go through is what we use as fuel to strengthen our Buddhist practice. So it's to say, rather than going to the mountaintops 
all you basically have to do your 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 mountaintop is basically the argument that you just had with your wife or the struggle that you're having in school and it's chant and and these are basically seen as positive like the struggles we go through are seen as positive things because it gives us a chance to it's basically the fuel that we need to create a solid self which is basically enlightening ourselves so love it love it so here's a real life example of a lady that goes by the name of Akko Anderson. So uh, this is basically her story. I kept working even during the horrible war years of my early 20s. The memories of which scare me even when today fires, air raids, sirens and bombs dropping, boats exploding, everyone running. Though I worked and worked, my life was asleep. Daimuku Chanting, Nam, Mioho, Renge, Kyo woke me up. A new joyful Akio was waking up. She was saying okay to chanting, okay to studying, and okay to doing Soka Gaika activities. This Akko rolled up her sleeve for a new kind of work. Refreshing, joyful work for the peace of the land. So essentially what's being expressed here is that um, Akko was deep asleep in her life um, due to all the craziness of what was going on around her. But Nam Yohorenye Kyo woke up her soul and it basically, you know, it, it, it kind of lit a fire in her that allowed her to, to kind of take it on, to take on the challenges, you know, with, with a smile, with this feeling of, you know, I can do this. I, I can do this. That's basically it. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions or anything on your mind, let me know in the comments below. And I shall talk to you later. This is Richard Lion King, a.k.a. The Lion of the Mystic Law from Self Guru Academy. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.